We are at Future Net World 2025 in London. I'm here with Gabriella Steve Soman. She is the Managing Director of Research and Network Strategy at BT. Gabriella, thanks very much for taking time to speak to us again. Really much appreciated. Thank you, Ray. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Now, you were on the opening keynote panel uh, here today at the event. A lot of topics uh, covered during that panel, but one of them uh, was about the uh, progress being made in the industry uh, around network APIs and network exposure. Uh, and you talked specifically about the potential for the combination of APIs and AI. Can you tell us how that is going to impact the potential, the business potential and the operational potential of operators like BT? So, so the, the way I see APIs is that we've, we've had the first generation of APIs. APIs have been around for a long time. Um, so, so that is not new. Uh, but the second generation, the kind of the, the next wave of APIs, the value of those are going to be beyond them being uh, more of a network, true network exposure. So they were really enabling network capabilities uh, for developers or, or verticals or even for ourselves. What's going to make them really powerful is that they are programmable. So APIs that, you know, for example, APIs that could uh, uh, do intelligent routing, rerouting based on predicted congestion. We talk about programmable networks, which are service uh, aware, intent driven network. At, at the heart of this is AI. You, you need to have in an intelligent network. So, so there's a really a strong power between aligning AI and APIs, and in particular saying, you know, that next generation of APIs, which are programmable APIs. Uh, and, and that's really at the heart, of it. For, for us, it's really at the heart of that evolution as well from moving away from a pure connectivity provider to more of a platform-driven, insights-driven uh, service provider. Now, I guess at the Part of this is being able to deliver what customers actually want and what they might need. And we also heard in the panel that there is a sense that finally communication service providers, digital service providers are thinking from the user perspective rather than what can we deliver. Do you get a sense that that is really happening? Is the tide turning? Are service providers really thinking of the customers first and working backwards from there? So, to a large extent, I think that we're now talking about the importance of doing it. <laughs> so, but but it's, you know, and, and, and it's, I always say that you cannot fix something or do something better unless you know what you need to be better at. Right, so, so I right. think the first step is recognizing that we've been focusing predominantly on the supply. So supply for me is building the network, we build and we hope that the demand will come and the demand driven by something else. Now we're shifting away, actually a big shift has to be from building a network for a mass market only, uh, where the what you build for your mass market is also needed you know, by your B2B customers to saying, well, to understand that a lot of the capabilities that we're building in the network are for edge cases, for B2B and B2G, G being the government. And that, uh, and that requires uh, uh, to understand their problems. It's not building a mass market. You know, there's not a mass market problem. There are different different enterprises and governments. They have different problems, different sets of challenges they want to address. And you, we need to understand those outcomes. You know, they want to solve for an outcome. So understanding how you solve for that outcome and the role that we play through that trusted, secure, elastic connectivity is going to be essential because the connectivity itself only does not lead to that outcome. It's really the, an, an ecosystem ranging from device to the platform to the application. And, and, and to understand that 
how we bring that together requires that we get much closer to our customers okay. and to that outcome. And and I think we're we're on a journey to to in that direction because we talk much more about the need to understand the demand for the supply that we build. So would it be true to say that it's perhaps it's not easy but easier to understand the requirements and then predict the outcomes in B2B and B2G, but less so in B2C in the consumer mass market? Can you, or is that harder to predict? I think it's harder to predict the B2B uh, demand because they're much more scattered. You know, enterprises, there's small enterprises, medium enterprises, large enterprises, uh, digital, at different maturity levels of digitalization uh, with different P&L, some are startups. You know. My point is that consumers, what predominantly has been driven, driven the demand for connectivity from the consumer lens has been the phone. From on the mobile network, right, and and, and your internet. So, so we've often we were used to being able to predict the demand because we're, there's going to be a new device launch. That's not the case on the enterprise side. Okay. So so they're a little bit more scarce. So I wouldn't say they're more. They're they're just it's just that they're different, and they require probably different approaches to it. And what, however, what we've seen now <laughs> when it comes to the consumer segment is that demand is, is not declining, but it's not growing as fast as in the past. Okay. And that's the data volume. The data volume. So, so, sorry. Yes, correct. The data volume. So we've gone, and it's not only in BT, this, we've seen this, we see this across the world where most most telcos have seen, have in the past seen a data growth of 50% or even more year over year. And that has, even before COVID, it began to decline. Yeah. Then we saw a little bit of a spike up again after COVID, you know, everything goes back into action again. But now we see that steady decline. And I think globally, I mean, we see that it's in the ranges of 10 to 15%. Uh, compared to, so it's still significant because the absolute number is still high, but it's the the growth per se is is, the, is you know flattening out, and that's because there's there's only so much there's only there's only so many hours of the day that you can be streaming something, yeah. while on the enterprise side. We you see, it, it's, 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 we've probably only seen the tip of the iceberg of what we can do. So therefore, I certainly believe that we as telcos play a, a really critical role in economic growth. Okay. So still easier, you think, to predict the B to C outcomes and how that's going yes. to... Okay. I okay, think that's, it's easier to predict that than in the, in the B to B. And then uh, another topic that came up in that panel was one around um, standardization. And of course, you know, standards are always being talked about, but there's a little bit of an uptick now because the official 6G standards process has just begun. So it's a bit more uh, out there in more headlines being talked about a bit more. Um, but there's also a lot of criticism of the way that the standards process works because it kind of works in the same way as it did 20 years ago and the world has moved on a little bit since 20 30 40 years ago so is there something that needs to change or or can change within that process that would help the operator community the vendor community and also users and customers when it comes to standard, I often start by saying that the the blessing for telecoms is standards because without standards we don't we don't scale, you know, interoperability and scalability. The curse is standards. Why the curse? Because it's just so slow. Everything needs to be so rigid that the, the lead time from invention to adoption is years, years. First of all, that, that kills innovation. It doesn't attract the most innovative companies. We need, we need to broaden our ecosystem beyond the traditional telco players because the ecosystems are expanding, but you can't, you, you won't attract a startup to come with innovation and standards if it takes them five years. They want results in two years, number one. 
the second challenge or opportunity I see as well is who is actually contributing to standards? Well, it's, it's once again, predominantly it's, it's the telecom vendor, equipment vendors uh, who are doing a great job innovating. But there's a big disconnect between that invention and innovation going into standards and the adoption. And we need to invite, we need to have the adopters, which in this case are the verticals, as well as those who contribute to the broader ecosystem, system integrators, device manufacturers, they need to be around, invited to be around the table, but we need to, to incentivize them to come. We need to move at faster speed than what we do today. Is any of that possible? You know, Ray, I often say that if we put man on the moon in 1969, we should be able to speed up standards. <laughs> and get users, uh, because one of the big challenges for so long has been that talking the same language as enterprise users, getting develop, engaging with developers. People have been talking about this for years and things never seem to move on. But so we, just, we need to, we have to make it work. So, so I think the question should be, I often ask is that what needs to be true for this to happen? So for this to be true, we need to understand, we need to go and ask the developers, we need to ask the verticals, what would it take for you to be part of this. Yeah, and then and then we reverse and we say, okay, what is it that we need to change? Right, rather than just saying, well, we invited you and you didn't come. Exactly. Right, okay. And you didn't contribute. No, maybe why didn't they call, come the second time? Maybe because they, they fell asleep, you know, because we were discussing one thing for hours and hours and hours. So so I think, I think absolutely is possible, but we need to, what needs to be true for this to happen? Plenty of food for thought there, Gabriella, and uh, I'm sure that that conversation, because uh, I know that 6G has kicked off a lot of conversations about standards and specifications, so on and so forth. I'm sure that's going to continue throughout the year. And we look forward to talking with you again soon at the DSP Leaders World Forum yes. in, in winter as yes, well. Yes, so likewise, Ray. Look thank you. Gabriella, thank you very much. Thank you.